Here's something that I want to read into the record. And this is an opinion piece actually written by congressman, believe it or not. And the title of it is uh, Gen Z Men Are Failing Online. And it's written by Jake Anchen. <laughs> I am not going to. Anchen Kloss. And he, he's a congressman from Massachusetts. Okay, I do believe. Too many young men are forging their identities online. Their avatars veer into perversity and extremism, with women and minority groups often the target of their conspiracies and bile. Last week, federal officials descended on a small town that I represent in Congress to arrest Jack Texeria, 21, an Air National Guard member, for allegedly leaking classified national defense information. If convicted, he rightfully faces stiff punishment. Outside the courtroom, the United States has to repair trust with his allies, and the Pentagon has pointed questions to answer on Capitol Hill about why junior enlisted personnel can print out top secret U.S. intelligence about the war in Ukraine. Probably because he probably couldn't. Somebody passed it to him. He's a patsy. Here's another tough question, though. Not one for the defense attorneys, diplomats, or generals, but for all of us. Is this young man an outlier or an emblem? The Washington Post reported Tashira recorded himself firing weapons while spouting anti-Semitic comments. His Discord group chat was allegedly riddled with misogyny and racism. And, it seems, from early reporting, he dumped classified documents more to impress members of the group chat than to disrupt U.S. foreign policy. Immaturity and hate brewing online. I spent the past year speaking with experts and parents about the state of young men in this country, and I'm concerned that what's unique about this situation is only that this individual had top secret clearance. Over the last decade, too many young men have retreated from work, education, and family obligations while exhibiting antisocial behaviors. Instead, they are forging their identities online. Their avatars veer into perversity and extremism, with women and minority groups often the target of their conspiracies and bile. As a father and a policymaker, I feel increasing urgency to address this issue head on. I spent last summer on the road and on the phone throughout my district to listen and learn. I saw boys thrive in loosely, constru loosely structured after school dodgeball games that in part self-efficacy. I heard about how many languished during COVID-19, turning to multiplayer online gaming, which cultivates the opposite qualities from the dodgeball game. Instead of gaining confidence and learning how to set and enforce healthy norms with peers, they're playing at pretend war while keyboarding, anonymized vitriol and associated chats. I don't want this for my son. And after meeting with constituents, I'm confident they agree. But parents feel helpless in the face of social media and video game behemoths that are turning their children into products for advertisers. Congress must protect children online. As Surgeon General Vivek Mercy has advised, the United States should raise the age of Internet adulthood from 13 to at least 16. Further, as social psychologist Jonathan Haidt recommended in testimony to the Senate, Congress should adopt the United Kingdom's age-appropriate design code, a set of 15 standards that includes verifying age, protecting children's privacy, and using positive behavioral nudges to lay the groundwork for more evidence-based policy. Congress should also fund research on social media and video games effects on children's mental health and compel companies to share relevant data. Okay, skipping down. We can go through the gun safety checks. Society must also build a positive image of masculinity, something to guide boys and young men toward. What does healthy masculinity look like in 2023? Every parent of sons whom I know is thinking about this, and yet it's a fraught topic, often discussed quietly in the den of the culture wars. 
That's beginning to change with important contributions from scholars like Richard Reeves, who has explored the education and workforce reforms. We should elevate the discussion, approaching different perspectives and curiosity. Attention to the well-being of Gen Z men should not detract from equally vital work on the mental health of young women, people of color, and the LGBTQ. Yeah, okay, bone bone community who have been even more negatively affected by the compare and despair element of online culture than have young men. All of Gen Z and the generations that follow should get the best of the technology while being spared its ills. And the lastly, too many young men are failing online and we must help them succeed in the real world. Okay. In other words, what this article is saying, this is a congressman. They, they mentioned Richard Reeves. Remember I was telling you that Brookings Institute sets policy. It's a military, it's a military policy maker. This is a problem. This is also a military problem. If we had to fight a war, we don't have enough boys to actually care enough to actually get out there and either volunteer or even be drafted. You have a malaise amongst the men where the boys are checking out. Uh, Roland Tomasi just did an, another video about boys checking out because they have no incentive to what? Participate in a, in a um, society that doesn't like them, doesn't promote them, doesn't help them. Why should they participate in it? You're not gonna help them. You're not gonna make things easier and everybody wants to take something from them. So uh, white boys are becoming black men at a rapid pace. I can tell you white men do not wanna be concubines. They do not. Even the lowliest beta male, white male, does not wanna be a concubine. They're not socialized to be that way. And so that's where you're gonna see the pushback. That's like when Richard Reeves is taking the what black women in this country has done to black men over 200 years and mapped it onto white men because the same thing is happening to them. That's where the push is gonna come. That's why I've been trying to tell the uh, people in the manosphere, but they don't wanna hear it because guess what? You always have to be the boogeyman. It's always Jermaine's fault. But these are headlines. I've been telling people about this for like three years, about this is coming. I've been telling the MGTOWs for the last 10 that the pendulum is going to swing. The pendulum is swinging and it's swinging rapidly because if not, you're going to get societal collapse. That's what they're facing. Now they thought they could kind of coax boys and men back into making families and working extra hours and do the so-called masculine thing, the masculine friend that we've been doing for like the last, what, three, 4,000 years. That has not worked. And what's really happening is that a man is isolated and isolated in his environment, right? He doesn't know because he thinks he's alone. That's what the manosphere is for. That's what the black manosphere is for. Because a lot of guys, you always hear them when they come to the black manosphere, the first thing they said, I thought I was crazy. I thought I was alone. Then I found out there's other people that think and going through the same thing I'm going through. And as that spreads, all these singular cells that used to be isolated and isolated by ideology, you start waking up minds. In other words, it's like going through the matrix and going from pod to pod to pod and waking them up. What happens to the matrix when all the pods start opening and all the minds start getting freed? That's what they're facing. That's what an Andrew Tate had to be stopped for. And that's why you had to replace an Andrew Tate with a pearl. The strong rebellious male figure father for instance was the softer more kind female figure almost saying the same thing but not quite that's what you're seeing a lot of people don't you know i mean god bless me you guys don't figure out and you can't see global geopolitical strategy even though it's happening right in front of your face and and, and connecting all the dots and it took the PhDs to tell me that, you know, for the most part, you know, they tell me for the most part, stop getting mad at these people. You know, I have to stop getting angry with uh, people that can't figure this out or don't see it even when you explain it to them. You can sit down and explain it to them step by step and they will not see it. And Dr. T 
T was telling me they can't see it. You can't explain to something where they can't see it, right? It's like the the, the guy G's in the cave. They they can't. All they see is shadows. And so you explain them the real world and where the shadows come from. It doesn't make sense to them. So what this guy G does? Does he remain in the cave with his with his fellows that think he's nuts, or does he go out in the real world? Hmm. Interesting. Anyway. I thought I'd drop this in because this was actually an interesting story and it actually goes in the vein of what we've been saying all along. So I'll put the link to the article in the description if I remember. And uh, yeah, this is, you know, I'll, I'll stop it here. This is BGS out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.